going to the chapel of Our Lady of Perpetual Help here at the residence of the Superior General of the Society of St. Alphonsus, Marie de la Guardia. We give credit to the singing Monsignor in praise of Our Lady, Monsignor William Hodge, with Daniel Capone and Silva Hoover, who is no longer with us. We pray God's rest to be upon Sylvia Hoover. We are a religious society of missionary bishops, priests, and religious brothers and sisters following the charism of our patron, St. Alphonsus Marie de la Guari, founder of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer known as the Redemptress. It is our mission to preach and to teach the gospel of redemption to all in the United States of America and the developing nations. According to our rule and present constitution, we strive to imitate the virtues and example of Jesus Christ, our most holy redeemer, consecrating ourselves especially to the preaching of the gospel to the poor. The Holy Mass is a prayer itself, even the highest prayer that exists. It is the sacrifice dedicated by our Redeemer at the cross. And repeat it every day on the altar. If you wish to hear Mass as it should be heard, you must follow with eye, heart, and mouth all that happens on the altar. Further, you must pray with the priest the Holy Word said by him in the name of Christ, and which Christ says by him. You have to associate your heart with the holy feelings which are contained in these words, and in this manner you ought to follow all that happens on the altar. When acting in this way, you have prayed Holy Mass. Don't pray at Holy Mass, but pray the Holy Mass, His Holiness Pope St. Pius X of blessed memory. Today, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is in honor of St. Marius and Companions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Eternal Father, I unite myself with the intentions and affections of our Lady of Sorrows on Calvary, and I offer to thee the sacrifice which thy beloved Son made of himself on the cross, and which he now renews on this holy altar. I offer it in the name of all mankind with the masses which are now being offered, and all those which will be offered throughout the world this day, to adore thee and to give thee the honor which is due to thee, confessing thy supreme dominion over all things, and the absolute dependence of everything upon thee are one day last then. To thank thee for the innumerable benefits we have received, to appease thy justice, arouse against us by so many sins, and to make satisfaction for them. To implore grace and mercy for myself, for the church, for all afflicted and sorrowing, for poor sinners, for those whom we have promised prayers, for all the world, and for the holy souls in purgatory. Amen. Eternal Father, I unite myself with the intentions and affections of Our Lady of Sorrows on Calvary, and we give praise to you for your great mercy and love. Almighty and eternal God, behold, we approach the sacrament of the only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. I approach as one who is sick to the physician of life, as one unclean to the fountain of mercy, as one blind to the light of eternal brightness, as one poor and needy to the Lord of heaven and earth. Therefore, I beseech thee of thy infinite goodness to heal my sickness, to wash away my filth, to enlighten my blindness, to enrich my poverty, and to clothe my nakedness that I may receive the bread of angels the King of kings and the Lord of lords, with such reverence and humility, with such contrition and devotion, with such purity and faith, with such purpose and intention, as may conduce to the salvation of my soul. Great, I beseech thee that I may receive not only the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord, but also the fruit and the virtue of the sacrament. O most indulging God, grant me so to receive the body of that only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, which he took of the Virgin Mary, that I may be found worthy to be incorporated with his mystical body and numbered among his members. O most loving Father, grant that I may one day contemplate forever face to face thy beloved Son, who now on my privilege am about to receive under the sacramental veils, who live in the reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, King of everlasting glory, behold, I desire to come to thee this day and to receive thy body and blood in this heavenly sacrament. For thy honor and glory and for the good of my soul. I desire to receive thee because it is thy desire and thy hast so ordained. Blessed be thy name forever. I desire to come to thee like Mary Magdalene, that I may be delivered from all my evils and embrace thee, my only good. I desire to come to thee that I may be happily united to thee, 
that I may henceforth abide in thee, and thou in me, and that nothing in life or death may ever separate me from thee. Amen. Since thou dost deign to come and dwell within me, O my Redeemer, what may I not expect from thy bounty? I therefore present myself before thee with that lively confidence, which thy infinite goodness inspires. Thou not only knowest all my wants, but thou art also willing and able to relieve them. Thou hast not only invited me, but also promised me thy gracious assistance. I firmly believe, O my divine Jesus, that thou art truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I believe that it really and substantially contains thy body and blood, thy soul and divinity. I acknowledge these truths. I believe these wonders. I adore the power that has wrought them, the same power that said, Let there be light, and light was made. Verily thou art a hidden God, the Savior. Amen. O God, who are charity, behold, he who abides in charity abides in thee. I desire to receive thee in this sacrament, that I may be more strongly united to thee in the bond of love. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ, my Savior? For that neither life nor death, nor any accident of fortune, nor any creature may ever be able to separate me. O my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Our mass intentions today are for all of the parishioners of Saints Peter and Paul, traditional Catholics, for all of the traditional Catholics throughout the world, for our benefactors and contributors. We offer the Mass from Dr. and Mrs. Joanna Bassanello, our Brazil benefactors, and the Mother Dominique in Cameroon, Africa, for all cardinals, archbishops, bishops, priests, and seminarians, especially our seminarians in our House of Studies in Cameroon, Africa, for our novices, Donald and Ali, all of our priests and brothers. We pray for Bishop Lane Jackson, Bishop Hippolyte Emily Peglin, Bishop David Pocou, of our priestly fraternity of St. Alphonsus Marie de Liguari, all of our nuns in Nigeria, the maids of Our Lady Perpetual Help, our oblate sisters of St. Alphonsus Marie de Liguari here in the United States. We pray for the president of these United States, Joseph Biden, and the vice president. We pray for also the Senate, the Congress, the House of Representatives, the Supreme Court justices, mayors and governors of every city and state, all leaders of nations of the world. We also remember in prayer Sister Brenda Adcott, Rochelle Amon, Joyce Vest, Dorothy Bethea McAdams, her sister Marguerite Lee, and for the repose of the soul of her husband who passed recently, Asia Barris, Carolyn Barris, Christine Barris, Kenneth Barris, Ciola Chapman, Ayani Clark, Madison Renee Cooper, Manuel Cooper IV, Mason Cooper, Micah Cooper, Sandra Cooper, William and Kathleen Crescenzo, Maria Crescenzo, Marva Davis and family, Stanley Davis, his wife Lauren and family, and his son, Patricia DeBerry, and her husband. And we pray also for her sister-in-law, Monique Green, and also for her brother who is ill and at home with hospice, Oliver Green. Mona Dern, Morgan Dern, Nikibia Dern, Louise Farmer, her daughter and grandchildren for their conversion. We pray for Blandina Forcer, Aunt Sis Sally, Betty, her husband and son, Deacon Cyril Forcer for his speedy recovery from his operation on his knee. Mr. Vincent and Josephine Giannini, Vincent Giannini Jr., Chris Giannini, Debbie Giannini, Virginia Giannini, Reese Giannini, Dina Giannini, all of the Giannini children and grandchildren, James Gerard Jr., Amanda the Lamb Gerard, Diane Glenn, James Glenn, her husband, Paris, and James Morell. We pray for Paris healing and strength. We also pray for Amaris Glenn. We pray for Audrey Berry Gross and family, Janae Gross, Jarrell Gross, Georgia Holmes, 
her son, daughter-in-law, her grandchildren, brothers and sisters, Deacon Paul Hood and his family, Adrian Jefferson, Shelley Jefferson, their brother. We pray for God's strength and grace to be upon Shelley Jefferson as she is in the hospital. Sister Lee Anna Johnson for her brother William Michael Johnson. Joy Barber, Daphne Lowe, Robert Lowe. We pray for their conversion. We pray for Michelle Johnson, Sister Justine Sobey Keys, her mother and family. Samantha Lamb, Tremaine Johnson, Sister Violet Lamb. Lori Lee, Stephen Lee, Sharon Miles, Raymond Clark, Sandra Miller, her wife John. We pray for Mother Sandra Faith Mosley, Brenda Peterson, Matthew Peterson Sr., Christopher Peterson, Matthew Peterson Jr., Allison Perez, Christian Rodriguez Perez, Ismael Rodriguez Perez, Nancy Perez, my mother Jean Smith, Darwin, Dwight, their wives and children. We pray for Darwin's mother and father-in-law and for his wife Shirley Smith. Melissa Knight Jones, Stephen Jones, Marcia Snipe, Sierra Snipe, Brandon Snipe, Tanya Snipe, Lillian Subs, Pearl Brooks Johnson, Jose Valentin, Jacqueline Valentin, Catherine Valentin, Anthony Cadavid Valentin, Luna Cadavid Valentin, Leo Athanasius Cadavid Valentin, Natalie Weaver, her sons, Sandra Welford, who celebrated her birthday on yesterday. We pray for all those who are in hospitals, nursing homes, those on land, on sea, in the military firemen and firewomen, for all medical staff, the doctors, nurses. We pray for those who are frontliners, who are caring for those who are sick. We pray for our family members who do not know our Lord Jesus Christ for their conversion. We pray for all of the children and the young people of the world that the Holy Ghost will send great conviction to their souls. We pray that mankind will amend their ways and offend the Lord God no more. We pray for the salvation of sinners for that of Russia. We pray that Russia will be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and for the holy souls in purgatory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. this bouquet of roses in reparation for the many sins and offenses committed against our Lord in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. We pray for all those who are committing atrocities and blasphemies against our Lord by receiving Holy Communion in their hands. We pray for the salvation of sinners, for all the needs of Saints Peter and Paul, traditional Catholic Latin Mass Church, for all of our traditional Catholics throughout the world, for the Society of St. Alphonsus Marie de la Gloria, for its spiritual, numerical, and financial growth, and for all those who are praying with us, watching with us on live stream the social media. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus, Perpetuorum Corda Fidelium, et tui Amoribus Amen. I unite with all the saints in heaven and with all the just on earth. I unite with you, my Jesus, to praise your Holy Mother worthily and to praise you in her and by her. I renounce all the distractions that may come to me while I am saying this rosary. O Blessed Virgin Mary, we offer you this creed to honor the faith you had upon earth and to ask you to permit us to share in that same faith. 
O Lord, we offer you this our Father, to adorn you in your oneness, and to acknowledge you as the first cause and the last end of all things. Most Holy Trinity, we offer you these three Hail Mary, to thank you for all the graces which you have given to Mary, and which you have given to us through her intercession. Credo in Deo, Patrum Omnipotentum, Creatorum Celi et Terra, et in Jesu Christi, Filium Eius Unicum, Dominum Nostrum, qui conceptus este Spiritus Sancto, natus ex Maria Virgin, pastus sub Pontio Pilatus, crucifixus mortuos et sepultus, decendit ad infernus, tertia dia resurrexia mortis, accendit a cenos, sedit ad exteram Dei Patris Omnipotentis, in me venturis es judicare vivus et mortuo. Credo in Spiritum Sanctum, Sanctum Ecclesiae Catholicum, Sancto Ordem Quinionem Remissionem Peccatorum, Carnis Resurrectionum Vita Materna. Amen. Pater Nostra, qui es in Celi, sanctificetur nomen Tua, ad venia regnum Tua, fia voluntas Tua, sicur in Celo et in Terra. Panem Nostra Quotidianum, da nobis otie, et dimiti nobis debita Nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus Nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Gloria Patri, Filio, Spiritus Sancto. Sicur erba in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Quinta Misteria Gloriosa. Primo Misterium est, Resurrectio Domini Nostri, Iesu Christi, Amor Tu. We offer you, Lord Jesus, this first decade in honor of your triumphant resurrection. Through this mystery and through the intercession of your Holy Mother, we ask for a lively faith. Pater nostre qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuam, advenia regnum tuam, fia voluntas tua, sicur in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum, da nobis odie, et debiti nobis debita nostra, sicur et nos debitibus debitoribus nostris, et in ei nos inducas in tentation, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. 
Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostri. Amen. Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritui Santo. Si curia vada in principio, e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. O me Iesu, dimiti nobis de vita nostra, libera nos ad ini inferni, cantuc in cielo, omnes animus, vere certa filias, quei maxime in vita misericordia tua. May the grace of the resurrection come into us and make us truly faithful. Secundo mysterium est, ascension celis domini nostri, Jesu Christi. We offer you, Lord Jesus, this second decade in honor of your glorious ascension. Through this mystery and the intercession of your Holy Mother, we ask for a firm hope and a great longing for heaven. Pater de nostre quies in genis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, Ad abeli ad regnum tuam, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo ad in terra. Hallelujah, O Potitiam, O Nobis Domini, Dimiti non misericordia nostra, si decade non visitus e vivus nostri, e ne nos incantas in tentation, se libera nos von amo. Amen. Ave Maria, grazie plena Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in rieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Ave Maria, Mother Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Ave Maria, Mother Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salam, Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedictus tu in rea fructus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salam, Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Iesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rearibus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Salve Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancti. Sicura la Rangis Filio in Cristo, e in secula secula orum, Amen. O me Iesu, dimiti nobis de vita nostra, libera nos ad in interne, quando che cella omnes animas, per certo filas quei maxima in vita misericordia tua. May the grace of the mystery of the ascension of our Lord come into us and prepare us for heaven. Tertium Mysterium est, Adventus Spiritus Sancti. We offer you, O Holy Ghost, this third decade, in honor of the mystery of Pentecost. Through this mystery and the intercession of Mary, your most holy spouse, we ask for your holy wisdom, that we may know, taste, and practice your truth and share it with everyone. Pater Nostra, qui es in Celi, Sanctificetur Nomen Tua. Avveni al regno tuo, ampia la volontà tua, sicura in cielo e in terra. Amen. Nostrum quotidiano, da nobis otie, et dimiti nobis de vita nostra, sicura et nos dimitimus de vitoribus nostris, et ene nos inducas in tentazione, se libera nos amaro. Amen. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum. Benedicta tu in mulier ribus e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulier ribus e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, 
Nuke in order more to snow spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mauti Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Nuke in order more to snow spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mauti Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Nuke in order more to snow spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nuke in order more to snow spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nuke in order more to snow spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, Grazia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque de noi ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque de noi ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque de noi ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tu in Iesu. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque de noi ora mortis nostri, Amen. Gloria, Patria, Fini, et Spiritui Sancti. Sicuria, Marta, in principio, et nuque, et sempre, And in secula seculorum. Amen. O mine Jesu, in miti nobis e vita nostra, liberandus ad ini inferni, conduc in cielum, omnis animas, per certum ilis quae maxime indigent misericordia tua. May the grace of Pentecost come into us and make us truly wise in the eyes of God. Quarto misterium est, Assuncio Beate Maria Virginis ad cielum. We offer you, Lord Jesus, this fourth decade in honor of the Immaculate Conception of your Holy Mother and her Assumption into Heaven, body and soul. Through these two mysteries and her intercession, we ask for the gift of true devotion to her in order to live a good life and have a happy death. Pater nostre qui es in cieli, sanctificetur in nomen tuum, ad veni ad regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, Sicut in cielo et in terra. Amen. 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 Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, or ordo nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ordo mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, or ordo nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ordo mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in rudi eribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rudi eribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in rudi eribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rudi eribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rudi eribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rudi eribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuque in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in rudi eribus, 
May the grace of the Immaculate Conception in the Assumption of Mary come into us and make us truly devoted to her. Quinto Mysterium est Coronatio Beate Maria Virginis in Cielo. We offer you, Lord Jesus, this fifth and final decade in honor of the crowning and glory of your Holy Mother in Heaven. Through this mystery and her intercession, we ask for perseverance and an increase in virtue up to the moment of our death, and thereafter the eternal crown that is prepared for us. We ask for the same grace for all the just and all of our benefactors. Pater Nostra, qui est in Cieli, Sanctificetum Nomen Tua, Avenia Regno Tua, Fia Voluntas Tua, Sicur in Cielo et in Terra. Pai Nostra Quotidiano, Da Nobis Odie, Ebbe Dimiti Nobis Debita Nostra, Sicur et Nos Dimitimus Debitoribus Nostris, Et Ne Nos in Ucras in Tentationum, Se Libera Nos Amalo, Amen. Ave Maria, Grazia Plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu mulieribus, benedictus frutis ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in an ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Domine tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus, benedictus frutis ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in an ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Domine tecum, Benedicta tu in mulia rebus, se benedictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulia rebus, se benedictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, se benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostri, Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancti. Si udera in principio et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. O me Jesu dimiti nobis de vita nostra, libra nos a digni inferni, candum in cielum omnes animas, versetum ilas qua maxima indigit misericordia tua. We beseech you, Lord Jesus, by the fifteen mysteries of your life, death, passion, and glory, and the merits of your Holy Mother, to convert sinners, to help the dying, to free the souls in purgatory, and to give all of us your grace, so that we may live well and die well. We pray also for the light of glory to see you face to face and love you during all eternity. Amen. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Lucero, Espes Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamus Exo Espiriere, 
Jesus, we ramos, your mentis and plentis, in our God we mamma body, here and there go out of Captain Nostra, he looks to us misery for his oculus, and knows the mercy, and he is a benedictum, proof to the pantries truly, know his most of our city and most tender. O Clemens, O Pia, O Duchis, Vergo Maria. Amen. Ora pro nobis Santa Dei Genitrix. Ut digni efficiamo promissionibus Christi. Remis, Deus cuius unigenitus per vitam, mortem et resurrectionem suo nobis salutis aterni et clemia comparabit. Concedi quesimus, ut ec misterie sacratissimo beate Maria Verginis Rosario recolentes, remitemur quod continent, et quod promitur assequamur, Prunum Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Please join us in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass.
parties of Bibi in the spirit of Santi Amen, which your people are at every day. Aradem Bibi Tikachi and Tchumea. Bibi Nay Lay is the Patriarch of Carlos and Nephi Jethro and Santa, Alphabet and the Brother of Sarah Amen. Quieto es Deus por ti lo mea, para que este corte se tenchego. Tu ma piti me inimigo. Bibi Lucy Jun, the Bibi Tabi Jun, the Sibi Lucy, the Bibi Lucy, the Moji Santi Jun, the Tabernacle of Jun. In Trivo, Oratari Day, Aradem Bibi Tikachi and Tchumea. Bibi Tabi 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 Tabi
et acerni refrieri subsidio, perdonum nostrum Jesum Christum filium circum tecum imitate regnat. Orderimus, Deus qui ad illustrandum ecclesiam tuum beatum canutum regem martyrii ama et gloria ostis et miraculisse decorari dignatus est concedi propitius ut sicut ipsis domine ce passiones imitatur fui ita nos et per eius et vestigia gradientes et gaudia sempiterna Perveniarit miriamur profundum dominum. Oderemus. Deus qui salutis eterni, qui ate Maria Virginitate, vecunda ilium, generi premia fertili isti, chili cresimus, ut ipsium per nobis interscitieri sentiamus, per quem et meriumus autuerum, vitae substituere dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, we take on orderimus. Ecclesi etum ecclesimus domine, precious placatus et viti, ut extrutus et adversitatibus et adarius universis, securia tibi surmit debilitati, per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitatis spiritus sancti Deus, Per omnia secula secula lordum. Amen. Lexio epistoli beati Pauli apostoli ad et eos. Fratres et Dei Gloriae et Christianis et Sanctis et Veneti. Lexio epistoli beati Pauli apostoli ad et eos. Fratres, rememorami ni Christi nos dies, nutribus illuminati magum certami, Sustenu istis passiones, et in austero quidem opprobrii, et tribulationis spectaculum vat, in austero autum socii talit, conversantium effecti. Namet vincitis compas est, et rapinum honorum destrorum, cum gaudius succepisti, cognoscentes vos aberes deliorum, permanentem substantium, non it is a great amitere, confidentium vestem, quae magnum abstis remuneratione, pacientia enum vobis necessaria est, ut voluntate legi facierte, reportetis commissione, aduc enum modicum aliquantur, qui venturus est, veni et non tardavi, justus autum meius expide vivi. Deo gratia. Historium anime in manu dei sunt et non tangi illus tormentum magnitiae. Visa sub oculis insidientiam modum, illi alta sub in pace. Alleluia, alleluia. Parabolis Deus nostri in sancti suis, alleluia. Dominus mortiscum, et cum fictu tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii secundum Matthieum, gloria, tibi, domi. In illo tempore, sedenti Iesus super motem alleviati, as she entered ad eiam discipuli secreto dicentes. Dic nobis, quando hec erfunt, et cum signum et ventus tui, et consumat si onis sepi. Et respondens Jesus dixi eis, qui verti de quis posse ducat, multi enem eniat in nomine, meo dicentes, ego sum Christus et multus seducat. Ad editori i enem estis credia et opiniones quae meorum, videti mei eterni ini, a potet eum rectiris 
set mode of SEDs. Cancer get set etang genes and genes and the rectum and rectum and everyone the question that the NCA at families actually they have both two spread rock and also on the immune suit they walk in. So traded both into the lot see only at OCD and both. And every you see is only how many boosts genes it was from the normal memory. I took a scan the last about a month and the invention to radiant and only have the old invention. And Muti and Sudo and Profete Sergi and Sadduce Motors and Konyak and Abunda with Iniquitas and the Akishi Initiate and Kavitas, Motor Tourum, the Alton at Process and Medica and Uthque in Kinam, with Sabus Erit. Is a filly a spirit to Santi Amen. Part to the Nostra de Quiescent Cherry, Santi Pice to a non and to one. At the baby at the rectum to one, hip or one touch to a secret in shadow at one terra. Pan of Nostra Potiti Amen, the Nobis Otia. At the Dimiti Nobis, the Pita Nostra. Secret at Nostra Miti was Debbie Totti was Nostris. At the name Nostra to Cassins and Tazione, say Libera Nostra Malo Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Domino secum, benedicta tu in remiere cruce, and benedictus fructus ventris tu in Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, non get in ordem mortis nostri, Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancta, sicula rad in principio, et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us. In nomine Patris, et Filio, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. You may be seated. The lesson from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 32 through 38. Brethren, call to mind the former days where in being illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. And on the one hand, indeed, by reproaches and tribulations, were made a gazing stock, and on the other, become companions of them that were used in such sort. For you both had companions on them, compassion on them, that were in bonds, and took with joy the being stripped of your own goods, knowing that you have a better and lasting substance. Do not therefore lose your confidence, which hath a great reward, for patience is necessary for you, that doing the will of God you may receive the promise. For yet a little and a very little while, and he that is to come will come and will not delay. But my just man liveth by faith. Let us stand. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 24. Verses 3 through 13. At that time, as Jesus was sitting on Mount Olivet, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming of thy consummation of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man seduce you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And they will seduce many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdom, and there shall be pestilence, and famines, and earthquakes in places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, 
and shall put you to death, and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be scandalized, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall seduce many. And because iniquity has abounded, the charity of many shall grow cold. But he that shall persevere to the end, he shall be saved. seated. Saint Marius and companions, Martha. Marius, a nobleman of Persia, with his wife Martha and two sons, Alipax and Abaxin, being converted to the faith, distributed his fortune among the poor, as primitive Christians did at Jerusalem, and came to Rome to visit the tomb of the apostles. The emperor Aurelian then persecuted the church. And by his order, a great number of Christians were shut up in the amphitheater and shot to death with arrows, and their bodies burnt. Our saints gathered and buried their ashes with respect, for which they were apprehended. And after many torments under the governor Martianus, Marius, Marius and his two sons were beheaded. And Martha drowned 13 miles from Rome, at a place now called Santa Nefa. Their relics were found at Rome in 1590. They are mentioned with distinction in all of the Western martyrology with the sacramentary of St. Gregory. The relics are kept principally at Rome, part in the church of St. Adrian, part in that of St. Charles, and in that of St. of Calibite. Edwin Hart, soul-in-law and secretary of Charlemagne, deposited a portion of these relics, which had been sent him from Rome in the Abbey of Selvihanstadt, of which he was the founder in the Diocese of Mentz. The martyrs and confessors triumphed over the devil by prayer. By this, poor and weak as they were, they were rendered invincible by engaging omnipotence itself to be their comfort, strength, and protection. If the art of praying well be the art of living well, According to the received maxim of the fathers and masters of a spiritual life, nothing is certainly of greater importance than for us to learn this heavenly art of conversing with God in the manner we ought. We admire the wonderful effects which this exercise produced in the saints, who by it were disengaged from earthly ties and made spiritual and heavenly perfect angels on earth. But we experience nothing of this in ourselves. Prayer was in them the channel of all graces, the means of attaining all virtues, and all the treasures of heaven. In us it is fruitless, the reason is plain. For the promises of Christ cannot fail. We ask and receive not, because we ask amiss. At times it seems that there is nothing we can personally do to alter the reality of our surroundings, however troubling they may be. In our current time, this causes many great anxieties for a variety of reasons, stemming from government to illness to global concerns. In the end, we can rely on prayer as the sure way to surrender to the will of God and persevere. St. Canute, King and Martyr St. Canute died in the year 1086. He was the king of Denmark. By his zeal for the faith, made enemies who put him to death in the church of St. Alban. Pope Benedict XV adorned his altar in the church of St. Mary in Travestivere in Rome with artistic candelabra. The Holy Rosary and the wearing of the brown scapular. Pray the rosary, wear the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Pray for the conversion of sinners. In these times of grave crises in the church and in the world, in the politics, we need to pray, 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 and do penance. Mankind need to amend their lives and offend the Lord God no more. Pray the rosary. 
rosary, wear the brown scapular, be obedient to God's holy word. So many bishops, priests, and religious have defected from the one true church of Christ. And yet, there are still those who remain, whose hearts are cold and indifferent, who do not love God as they profess. Pray the rosary, wear the brown scapular, pray for holy priests and religious, that God will increase the number of men and women in the world, boys and girls who love Christ. Pray through the intercession of the martyrs today that those of us who suffer for Christ will indeed reign with him. Pray the rosary. Wear the brown scapula. And I caution you, many of you hold the rosary in your hand. You hold the beads in your hand. You pray in unity with the church, praying the rosary from your lips, but your heart is far from God. You wear the brown scapular, but you are not truly a Christian. These are not tokens and presents. These are sacramentals, and we obtain grace from sacramentals. But if your life does not reflect what these sacramentals stand for, then you merit nothing. That's why so many of your prayers are not being heard, because we have devils supposedly praying the rosary. You cannot pray the rosary when you are a disobedient and a defiant. You need to ask God for mercy and for forgiveness and amend your life. Repent of your sins. And then pray the rosary and receive the protection of Our Lady. St. Paul writes to the Hebrew Christians in our epistle today, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 38, he speaks about how God called us and illuminated us that in our great afflictions, by reproaches and tribulations, Though we were made a laughing stock of gazing stock to many, and on the other hand became companions of them that were used for all sort of persecutions. For you both had compassion on them that were in hands, and those who were in your hands, and those who were taken and stripped of everything. Yes, St. Paul says, do not therefore lose your confidence, for patience is necessary in these times of great affliction and trials that has come upon the church. St. Paul encourages the church, these Hebrew Christians, be encouraged, for it is necessary that we understand God's will in the midst of all of this. God has a purpose for the times in which we live in, for the spread of this pandemic, for the pestilences, the earthquakes, the wars, and the rumors of wars that are spoken in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 24. And St. Paul says, yet a little and yet very little while he that is to come in his second return will come and will not delay, for the Lord is going to come again. We are living in dangerous times. We do not know the day nor the hour when the Lord will come, but we must be ready. But the just man lives by faith. We need faith. We need to pray. We need to have confidence that he will not delay. He will come again. 
Gospel of Matthew, it speaks about the end of time, which I will be discussing more in our Bible study tonight. I want to speak on the subject, be ye ready. Be ye ready. Many of you are not ready for anything. But many of you make ready for worldly things. Temporal things. Many of us make ready our parties, our banquets. We make ready our clothes at night so that we can have them prepared for the next day. We make ready for our friends and our families. Everything is ready. When we cook, everything is in order so that we can use all the necessary ingredients to make our food good. We make ready for everything worldly. We make ready for the world. We make ready for the flesh. And we make ready for the devil. But many of us are not ready for the second return of our Lord. You say you are. But at any moment our Lord can return. Where will you spend your eternity? Many of you probably already know where you will spend your eternity. Because you have been unfaithful to God. Some of you will not have the opportunity to repent and amend your life. It is the will of God that all men be saved. And to come to the knowledge of truth. But the sacred scripture says, some men will not be saved. I wonder if some of you are part of the some men will not be saved. You were born of human parents. Maybe a bad seed. Maybe you have not submitted and surrendered your whole will to God. And it might just be that you can't. God has given each and every one of us free will. God gives us free will. And many of us have made bad choices in life. And we have not repented of those bad choices. And though you may say, I repented, I've gone to confession, I've done penance, but your life does not reflect a change. Repent, or you will likewise perish the message of Fatima to the three shepherd children was, Offend the Lord God no more, for he is greatly offended. How many of us continue to offend the Lord God by our thoughts, our words, and our actions, our venial and mortal sins? It is the will of God that all men be saved and Come to the knowledge of God's truth. Our Lord says in St. John chapter 14, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Many of you have been given the truth. But you have not lived out that truth. You gave up a long time ago. You fell into sin. You become a repeated offender. Getting up, falling down. Getting up, falling down. Getting up, falling down. Taking advantage of divine mercy. God is loving and kind and compassionate and merciful. And he wills no man to be lost. We will our own selves to be lost. It is the will of God that all men be saved and to enjoy him in eternity. But some of you will not be in eternity. Be ready. 
The Lord does not tell us in this gospel of St. Matthew chapter 24, in this Olivet Discourse, he does not tell us to prepare ourselves for death, but to be prepared. To be prepared. We must be prepared when death arrives. And it's soon. And many of you will not spend your eternity in heaven, but you will Spend your eternity in hell. Many of you think that you will go to purgatory when in fact you will not. Because you will die not in the state of grace, but in mortal sin. Where will you spend your eternity? Heaven or hell? Lord does not tell us to prepare ourselves for death, but to be prepared when death arrives. Death is a reality. Be ye ready. The time of death will not be the time to prepare ourselves to die well. When you have been told or when one has been told that we can do no more for you, and they turn you over to your family and turn you over to others after having lived a life of rally and a life of sin. Now you want to amend your life on your deathbed? It is not possible. It is not possible. So many of us have taken advantage of time. God has given each and every one of us time and our sins have mounted up and mounted up and now we are about to die. And we want to amend our lives on our deathbed because we have been told that soon it will be over. The time of death will not be the time to prepare ourselves to die well. To die well and happily, we must prepare ourselves beforehand, before we are laying on our bed of affliction, when there's no more that the doctors or medical science can do. That person lying there is good for nothing. They wasted their lives and wasted good times, seasons, have wasted. My sons and daughters, how many of you bishops, priests, religious deacons, men and women of God have wasted so many days? When you've had the opportunity to straighten it out, you failed to do so. And you have no more strength to do so. You can't see, you can't walk, you can't stand, you can't do this. Everything is falling apart. Things are happening to your heart, your lungs, your kidneys. Everything is going bad. Some of you are becoming spiritually septic and infected even more with sin. And there is no hope. There is no hope. Because you waited until all of your physical was no longer working. What use can God get out of a dry morsel? It's nothing there. Because you wasted all of this time. All of these days, nights, days sitting in mass. Days attending Mass. Days praying the Rosary. Days reading the Scripture. But nothing changed. Nothing changed. And now you want to make ready. It's not possible. Be ye ready. Once again, the Lord does not 
tell us to prepare ourselves, but to be prepared when death arrives. I've been talking about death all this week. When death comes, it will be almost impossible in that tempest and confusion to tranquilize a troubled conscience. You won't have time to repent. You're too troubled. You don't have that true consciousness. You're only repenting because you're afraid of what you're going to face. You've wasted time. You've lied. You've sworn deceitfully. You've fornicated. You've committed adultery. You used drugs and alcohol. You ran with women and men outside of the sacrament of matrimony. You've done some very, very bad things. You have not been a good bishop. Watching over the flock God entrusted to your care. You've not been a good priest. Living a holy life. A good deacon who has forsaken his office. And has turned his office over to others because he has failed God and failed his service. What can you do now but just sit there and wait for your number? How many of you have failed God in your responsibilities when you said, I'm tired. I can't do it. It's too much on me. I have too many things going on in my family life. And you forsook God and you threw it away and said no to him. It burdens me as a shepherd to know that so many souls have said no to the Lord. No, I can't do it. No, I will not obey. No, I will not submit. You said no to God. And now your days are greatly troubled. Your days are greatly troubled. You have no happiness. The peace of God is not in you any longer. The grace of God cannot be emptied into that dry up place, which is your soul. You're just an empty shell. Everything going in is going out. And that's because the devil has gotten everything he needed from you. And all of those dark spirits are waiting to hurry you in to hell. It is not the angels of the Lord. Your guardian angels hide in his face because they see your end, that you wasted so much time. All the seasons when you had, times when you could see, could hear, could speak, could walk, could talk. Now, nothing. Revenge is mine, says the Lord. I will repay, says Romans chapter 12, verse 19. God is getting you back. You said no. Now is your time to answer to that no. To the times you squandered and wasted my sons and daughters, it is impossible in that tempest and confusion when one is laying on their bed of affliction to tranquilize a troubled conscience. This reason tells us that this God threatens. God threatens, says that then he will come not to pardon. I'm coming to you, but I'm coming with a vengeance. You chose to go your way. I am the way. I am the truth. 
I am the life. You chose to disobey your superiors. You chose to go another way. You chose to do it your way. You chose to disobey your bishops and your priests. You chose it. That was the way you chose. And you chose the wide way, that open way. You did not want the true and be true to the straight and the narrow way. You did not want to choose the straight and the narrow way. You wanted to have your own way. You wanted to do it your way. And now God is coming with the vengeance. When you start seeing people break down, break down, and I'm, and I'm not talking about when God wills it. When God permits a soul to be uh, sick and go through trials and tribulations for his honor and glory, because not all sickness is a result of sin. But most sicknesses and diseases when you can't even hear, you can't even remember, when your mind is just being taken away, when your eyes are no longer able to see or to read prayers or to pray the office because you, God says you can't participate. I will not allow you to participate. I can't speak the Latin, the church's language, because God says no. I will not even allow the syllables to come together the declensions to come together. I will not permit it. Because you wasted time. You laughed and scoffed at others. You thought you had all the time, but the Lord says, vengeance is mine. I'm coming back for you. And God has come back. In the life of David, David was notorious was a king. He couldn't build the temple of Solomon because David engaged in sexual immorality by having his general go back out knowing that if he went back out he would die because David had lust and desire in his heart for Bathsheba. He lusted. He wanted the world, the flesh, and the devil. It was eaten at him. What you and I sow, we will reap. If you sow to destruction, you're going to die in destruction. You know, my sons and daughters, this is a very serious homily. Be ye ready. You can't wait until you lay on your bed of affliction to be ready. You cannot expect the priest to call the angels and the saints to take you to heaven when you've never lived for heaven. You never prepared for heaven. God comes with a vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And God came with a vengeance to David. David had relationship with Bathsheba. And Bathsheba had a son. It was David's son out of wedlock. And uh, the prophet came to him and said, David, you are the one that has caused everything to go wrong around us. Do you know how many of you have Cause the church not to prosper, not to grow. Because you brought in the church Aiken's goods, you brought in all your mess from your past life. You've never repented, you never amended your life. Everywhere you went, you destroyed everything. You set on fire in hell. Many of you have been in the church so long and you've been nothing but a darkness to the church. Not a light. You haven't helped the church. Yes, you've given money, 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 money. But what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? Your 
money will not take you to heaven. Your giving to the church will not take you to heaven. God wants your soul. And the soul has been taken over by canker worms and palmer worms and eaten at you like cancer. The prophet Nathan told David, you are the one that has caused this nation to fall. Some of you are the problem in God's church. Yes, listen to the devil and say, well, I think I just walk away because since I'm the problem. Well, then you just do that. You just put another nail in your coffin. That's what's wrong with so many. You've never been able to face reality and to face your condition and your circumstance. And to say, Lord, I have offended you. I've given up on you. I gave up on you. I said no to you. If you give me another opportunity, you need to pray like Hezekiah, who asked the Lord to give him more years. He prayed in faith. Lord gave him many, many more years to get his life right. But many of you will not have that grace like Hezekiah. Go back to David. David's son died because God cursed him. Many of you are living under a curse. That's why your children are not right. Because you're under a curse and you've cursed them because of your bad deeds. You brought destruction on these children because of your bad deeds and your bad choices. You need to do penance, 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 and repent. Do penance, pray for these children that you caused to be lost. When you, go, when you go before the Lord, many of you, the Lord will say, they are in hell because of you. Your very children are in hell because of you. You did this. Because children follow their parents. And when children hear and when they know something's not right, they are very sensitive to their parents. And you see them withdraw. Because they realize that something is not right. What are you going to do? Many of you have wayward children. And you wonder why they are not in the Catholic Church. In church, because, yes, you may have raised them up in church. But they saw your manner of living. They saw how you lived. The young people today, they know hypocrites when they see them. And they did not believe anymore because they saw your lifestyle. Revenge is mine, says the Lord. I will come back and repay. It is, says St. Augustine, who wrote his confessions in a book. St. Augustine says a just punishment that he who was unwilling when he was able to do right being told every day, every day, every day, living in the midst of holiness every day, being told every day, being told every day when they were able to save their souls will not be able when he is willing. But you will say, perhaps I may still be converted and saved, because that's what some of you are saying. I will be converted and saved. Would you throw yourself into a deep well saying, perhaps I may not be drowned? Throw yourself in a deep well and see what happens. You're going to drown. 
Oh God, how sin blinds. Sin blinds the wisdom. Sin blinds the eyesight. Sin blinds the understanding and deprives the soul of reason. That's why you can't think correctly. Because it deprives you of reason. When there's a question of the body, men speak rationally. But when the soul is concerned, they speak like fools. Oh, we can talk worldly talk. We can speak worldly things. We can speak about, oh, how you should do this, how you should do that, how you should mix this for the cake and for the batter, and, and how you should do this for the chicken, and how you should do this for the steak. I, this is how I follow the directions. This is how it should be done. Or this is how it all should be put in order in the dishwasher. You know, this is how it should be, and, and we have to do it this way. We can talk about that. But when it comes to the soul, can't speak about it because you have no reason. And God turned you over to a reprobate mind. Romans chapter 1. Who knows, dear Christian, but this point which you read is the last warning that God may send you. Be ye ready. Let us immediately prepare for death that it may not come upon us without giving us time for the judgment, the particular judgment. St. Augustine says that God conceals from us the last day of life. He conceals from us. Even when the doctor says you may only have a couple of hours, you don't know what hour that is. He conceals it from us that we may be always prepared to die. St. Paul tells us that we must work out our salvation not only with fear, but with trembling. You're better than me because if I were sitting here, I would be trembling in my soul. I would tremble knowing I'm in big trouble with the supreme God. Because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We want to speak of God as just loving. That's what that modernist church does. We want to speak of God as just compassionate and merciful. He's all of that, but he's also a God of vengeance. And he will repay. St. Antonius relates that a certain king of Sicily, to make one of his subjects understand the fear with which he sat on the throne as king, commanded him to sit at table with a sword suspended over him by a slender thread. The apprehension of the threat might give way filled with so much terror that he could scarcely eat his food. He was afraid. We are all in like danger right now. Every one of you listening to me, hearing me, we, we are all in like danger. But the sword of death on which our eternal salvation depends may at any moment away and fall upon us at any moment. It is indeed a question of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3 says, if the tree fall to the south or to the north, in which place soever it shall fall, there shall it lie. And that means that in hell you will fall the way you fell. And there you will spend in that little compartment forever in that one place. If when death comes we are found in the grace of God, oh, with what joy shall we say, I have 
secure it all. I can never again lose my God. I shall be happy forever. But if death finds the soul in sin, with what despair will it exclaim, Ergo, Erebimus, I have erred. And for my error, there will be no remedy for all eternity. The fear of an unhappy eternity made the Blessed Father of Allah, St. John of God, Apostle of Spain, made him say, when the news of death was brought to him, he said, oh, that I had a little more time to prepare for death. This fear made the abbot Agatha, who spent so many years in penance, say at death, what will become of me? Who can know the judgments of God? St. Arsenius, too, trembled at the hour of death, being asked by his disciples why he was so much alarmed about death. He said, and I quote, My children, this fear is not new to me. I have had it always during my whole life. Above all, it's been there because death is a reality. In the Old Testament book of Job, as I come to a close, Job chapter 30, 1 verse 14 says, What shall I do when the Lord shall rise to judge? And when he shall examine what shall I answer him? He will say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You had all this time to rightly yourself. And now you stand before the great Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. St. Paul tells us that we all must give an account. We must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema. And we must give an account of all that we've done, whether it be good or bad. The books will be opened according to the apocalypse. And you will be judged out of those books. What shall I do when the Lord shall rise to judge and when he shall examine, what shall I answer him? He will say, I know you not. You were disrespectful to my bishops, my priests. You would not take heed to what they told you for the good of your soul. You chose your own way. Now enter into eternity in hell, prepared for the devil and his fallen angels. O oh, eternal Father, for the love of Jesus Christ, pardon me, give me grace to love thee while I have breath in my body. I have hitherto resisted your will. But if you give me grace, I will resist it no more. Help me to do whatever you command me today, this night. Help me to detest all of my past. Help me not to offend you ever again. For thou who said to Mary Magdalene, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. But you will go back to your rat hole. You will go back to that cave. Because you have no 
energy to stand up upright before God. God knows what you are doing and you know how you displease him. I plead with all of you who do not know our Lord Jesus Christ and who have offended him in your days. Repent while you have a chance and amend your life. Be ready for at such an hour when you think not the Son of Man will come to you. King Nomine Padre, thank you. His spiritual son. Time is filled with swift transition. Naught on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Yes, you better hold. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hands. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, dressed in his righteousness from the heart of Faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I will stand. Everything else is sinking sand. Turn your eyes on him. Look full in his wonderful face. You can't even look at the tabernacle really. Because you have offended him and wounded his heart and plunge the dagger into his holy church. You have not been beneficial to his church, but a snare to the church. Repent, I ask you, and be ready. Dominus Simoriscum, Bedu Fetitur, Orenus, Anima Nostra Sicupas Eret, Es Dea Quia Planet, Amen, La Quies Caris Creatus Es, Et Nos Liberatis Sumus.
O Vati Fatra Sudvenia de Pesce de Sacra Pici, mi se tale pere de Tenga Patru de Pizza Mitzvah. Sushiria de Masara Pici, mi Maru Sus, ala Ora Gloria Mamu Sui, Rul Tavu Mufei Nostru Sus, pe Ecclesia Sui Sancta. Amen. Oremus. Et on y a secula, secula, Amen. Dominus Bonvisco, Sorsum Cordia, Grantius Agathus Domino Deo Nostro, Vini Digna Justin et Secona Salutarius Tibi Semper et Luke Gratius et Jenny, Domini Sancti Pater Omnipotens Eterni Deus, par Christi et Domino Nostro, Quoque Magistat in Tum Lorda Tantia, Adorat Dominationis Tribu Podestatis, Cele cera cruce per le tutte seguiate sepa. Soci exaltazioni in cancella. Con grive sed nostres voces, cune vitim dubbes de creamo, supplici che pressioni vicentes. Santo, santo, santo. Domus Deus Sato, non mi si chiede il tempo di nome tu, o sana e eccessis. Vene di Dios qui vene di nome, di nome, o sana.
quei perché tolti possibili. Secular, secular, amen. What reigns, Rachel, it is sadly that this moment here, the winning situation, for Marty and the Demos Dilcher, Pater and Noster, quiescent shares, sanctificator nomen tuum, adveni hath regnum tuum, fia voluntas tua, secreted cherlo et in terra, palmen nostrum quo titiam. Dan nobis otie et demiti nobis de vita nostra. Sicun et nos demitimus, debitarius nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentatio. Salita la nostra madre. Omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper reportis cum. Et with thee to two more. Amus de cutolis de catum. Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei Cotolis de Catulum, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei Cotolis de Catulum, Dove nobis patrum domini nostri possibilis. Axe take home, and with these two all.
ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਛੋਰਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਚਾਂਸੀ ਵੀ ਆ ਮੇਰੇ ਅਸਰ ਤੇ ਰੁਕੇ ਵੀ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਟਾਂਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਬਾਤ ਚੀਜ਼ ਤੇ ਟਾਂਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਸ ਲੋਸ ਤੇ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਪਾਵਰ ਉਹ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕੁਝ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੇਰ ਦਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਕਾਫੀ ਦਿਨ ਉਸ ਕੋ ਦੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਨਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਕੋਪ ਰਹੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਪਾ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਪਾ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਪਾ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਪਾ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਆਪ ਮਰੇ ਅਸਰ ਤੇ ਰੁਕ ਰਹੇ ਵੀ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਟਾਂਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਆਪ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਬਾਤ ਚੀਜ਼ ਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਬਸ ਲੋਸ ਤੇ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਪਾਵਰ ਉਹ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਬੇਰ ਦਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਹੋਰ My Jesus I believe that thou art truly in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things and I long for thee in my soul. Since I can not now receive these sacraments we come at least spiritually into my heart as though thou hast already come. I embrace thee and unite myself entirely to thee and ever permit me to be separated from thee. Um Ecce amus ecce qui tollit peccato omni. Domni nostri dicus ex subjecta mea, ante sanctus verbo, ex nava ce anima mea. Domni nostri dicus ex subjecta mea, ante sanctus verbo, ex nava ce anima mea. Domni nostri dicus ex subjecta mea, ante sanctus verbo, ex nava ce anima mea.
Digo alta monti sedi ci seis. Ne eteriani ni patis in cui vos ed persi criontu. Dominus quobiscum et spiritu tuo. Offerings. Sanctorium to offer Domine intercessi poli placatus. Grace that craces, who creates a barrage of the Brahmus action, perpetual sapatsioni, pianus de Domine nostro Jesu Christ infinito, we take a beauty to drink it, offerings. To effect the participation of every sacri craces, Domine, Deus nostro, in cui is extremo corruptum intercedi enti di arte, cardinuto mati in tu olsit in amis effect. Offerings, et nos cardinio domine, predicate equimine, et intercedi entity adorations de cetris mariet, celestis regia faci, et ci consortis de unum domine. Offerings, quesimus domine deus nostra in quos divini cintis participatio in vede equiant, non exsignis succida divis, nostro Iesu Christi filiantio, contempla vida te dregna, in the Tati Spirit of Sancti Deus, but only a secular secular one. Amen. Dominus Pobiscum, et in Spiritu Tuo, ite Messias, Deo Gratia. Maria, grazie a te, Domine Secu, benedicta tu in Maria, per lui, se benedicta il suo testo, Gesù, Gesù, Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre Dei, ora non vi stai a noi, non vi stai a noi, non vi stai a noi, non vi stai a noi. Ave Maria, grazie a te, Domine Secu, benedicta tu in Maria, per lui, se benedicta il suo testo, Gesù, Gesù. Santa Maria, Madre Dei, ora non vi stai a noi,
Beispiel, wenn ihr jetzt ein Foto mit einem Experiment seht, wo die Tisse als Deutsche, dann hat ihr studiert in der Jose, dann hat ihr da die Leute mit Fähigkeit der Wichsen, zwar die, und die hat die Jose bei Jesus Fahrt, und die hat die Sebastian Stütze und Paolo, bei Arno Santis, Pons Pocca Dossioni, der Cattolio Poli di Zappi, ex Sozazione, Santi Matrix, ex Lesi, 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 Behundung Christum Domina, Amen, Santi Michael, Amen, Defendi, Amen, Credo, Amen, 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 Am
throughout the world. Please join us as we begin our Bible study with our Superior General, Bishop Sherman R. Mosley. Good evening. Welcome, all of you, to our Bible study this evening here at the Chapel of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. We thank God for each and every one of you for joining us each day in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, as well as in all of our devotions. As we enter into our Bible study today, as we continue on the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, chapter one. Remember that we use the Dewey Reigns version of the Bible. This is the official Bible of the Catholic Church. We do not use the Protestant Bible known as the King James Version of the Bible. That Bible was tampered with. We use the King James Version of the Bible. Those of you that need to order that Bible, you should go to Angelus Press or to Amazon and order the Holy Bible according to the Dewey Rames Version. Translated from the Latin Vulgate and diligently compared with the Hebrew, Greek, and other editions in diverse languages. The Old Testament was first published by the English College of Douay in AD 1609, and the New Testament was first published by the English College of Rames in AD 1582. Pope Leo XIII encouraged all bishops, priests, and religious to read the sacred scriptures and to teach from the sacred scriptures. The holy sacrifice of the Mass begins with scripture and ends in scripture. Pope Leo XIII granted to the faithful who shall read for at least a quarter of an hour the books of the sacred scriptures with the veneration due to the divine word and as spiritual reading an indulgence of 300 days. Let us pray. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater et Nostre, qui es in Cieli, sanctifice tuo nome tuo, ad veri ad rendem tuum fit voluntas tua, sicut in Cielo et in Terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum da nobis potie, et debiti nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos debitimus debi dormibus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentatio, Se libera meu semado. Amen. 
Come, Holy Ghost, create a blessing in our hearts. Take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill our hearts, which thou hast made. In our name, God, we are secure. We are spirit, your son, to Amen. We are Alphonsian Redemptorists, and it is our duty to preach the gospel of redemption to those who are willing to hear it, to the poor and the disenfranchised. We follow the charisma of St. Alphonsus and read the Iguari. As you see me tonight, I am in the habit of the Alphonsians. I am the superior general of our society of St. Alphonsus Marie de Liguari. If you look at the beautiful picture of St. John Newman, there at the left of the altar, you will see him dressed in the ferriola, which I wear, and the pectoral cross, which I wear, and the, pe the pastoral ring, which I wear. He's also with the Zucchetto. If you look to the right, uh, the left of the altar, actually to your left, it's to my right, you will see our founder, St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguari. And our founder, St. Maria de Liguari, is with the collar that I have on that you see that all Alphonsian redemptors wear. And he wears, of course, uh, the cape, which is Roman purple because he is a bishop. But he also has there the black habit with the 15 decades of the Holy Rosary. If you look at my rosary, I have here, if you look very closely, if you can look very closely here, mm -hmm. the Holy Rosary that I wear is the 15 decades of the rosary. And there we have the medal of St. Alphonsus and Marie de Liguari and the medal of Our Lady of Perpetual Health. We wear the 15 decades of the rosary, and this is our habit of the redemptors. Now, as a superior general, I am the bishop, so I wear the clothes of the bishop. This is what we wear as bishops in the redemptors order. However, throughout the day, I wear just all black, the same habit that all of our confreres wear. We are known as Alphonsian Redemptorists. We are a missionary society throughout the world. We are here in the United States, in all of Africa, particularly in Cameroon, Nigeria, the Congo, and in the bush. We are in India, in the Philippines, and in South America, particularly in Brazil at this time. Pray as we continue to grow throughout the world. We are in France. And we ask that you continue to pray for vocations, for the religious life, and for the priesthood as we are growing here throughout the world. Pray for us as redemptorists to do God's work in preaching the gospel of redemption. As we continue our studies, as we were studying on last week, the book of the Apocalypse and we note that in the book of the Revelation, the Revelation of St. John the Apostle, the Apocalypse of St. John the Apostle. Now, the Apocalypse chapter 1, of course, is the writer. He is the penman of the book of Revelation. He is the penman. He is the secretary of the book of Revelation. In the first and second and third chapters of the book are contained instructions and admonitions which St. John was commanded to write to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor. And in the following chapters to the end are contained prophecies of things that are to come to pass in the church age, which we are living in now, particularly towards the end of the world, this great crisis which we are experiencing in the world at this time, in the time of the Antichrist. We are living in the days of the Antichrist. It was written in Greek, of course, in the island of Patmos, where St. John was banished because of his faith in God. He would not bow down to the decree of the Roman Emperor. He was 
given this cruel judgment by the Emperor Domitian about 64 years after the Lord's ascension into heaven, which we read on last week from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Now, in verses 1 and 3, we read from the Apocalypse of St. John the Apostle, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to make known to his servants the things which must shortly come to pass, and signified sending by his angel to his servant John, the second verse of the first chapter of Revelation, who had given testimony to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, what things soever he had seen. The third verse of Revelation chapter 1. Blessed is he that readeth and heareth the words of this prophecy and keepeth those things which are written in it. For the time is at hand. The apocalypse or the revelation. The word apocalypse simply means the revealing of truth. The revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I rather prefer the word apocalypse, which the Latin interpreter did not think fit to change. The revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God. He signified it by an angel, meaning that he sent it by the angel to his servant John. John is one of the apostles. Well, last week I gave you Matthew chapter 10, where our Lord chooses his 12 apostles, and John is named among them. John is also mentioned in the canon of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. St. John, who represented and spoke in the uh, to Christ, who knew Christ, who lived with Christ, who saw him and handled him, the word of life. If you turn your Bibles to St. John's Gospel, or his epistle, in the first uh, chapter of uh, St. John, he says in the first epistle of St. John, the Apostle, remember, St. John wrote the fourth gospel, and he wrote the three epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and he wrote the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. John says in these words, he says in the fifth verse of the first chapter of his epistle, 1 John, and this is the declaration which we have heard from him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So we see that St. John handled and touched the word of life. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ sent this message to St. John by his angel, sent to his servant John, so that these things were immediately revealed to St. John by an angel who represented and spoke in the person of Christ. In verse 3 of Revelation chapter 1, it says these words, Blessed is he that readeth and heareth the words of this prophecy, and keepeth those things which are written in it, for the time is at hand. And this cannot be meant of all things in the Apocalypse, where mention is also made of the Day of Judgment and of the glory of heaven at the end of the world. So what does it mean? It can only mean that some things were to happen shortly in the days of John. For example, what is said of the seven churches those are the things that happened in John's time. Found in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation. Or the persecutions foretold should begin shortly, which they did in the early days, from the first through the 
third century. Of course, we know that the persecutions of the Christians stopped around the year 316. Or else, these expressions is found in Revelation chapter 1, verses uh, uh, 1 through 3, and in chapters 2 and 3, are only to signify that all time is short, and that from the coming of the Messiah, being born in Bethlehem, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we uh, are not in the last age or the last hour. Turn your Bibles to the Epistle of uh, St. John, the Epistle of St. John, chapter 2, verse 18, and it reads, Little children, it is the last hour, as you have heard, that Antichrist cometh. Even now there are become many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last hour. St. John is writing to the church of Ephesus. He is the bishop of the church of Ephesus. And he's writing in the second chapter here and the 18th verse, little children. He's writing as a pastor to his little children. It is the last hour and as you have heard that Antichrist cometh, even now there are become many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last hour. Many Antichrists. So St. John, the writer of the book of Revelation and the Gospel of St. John, the fourth Gospel, the first, second, and third epistles of John and the book of Revelation, excites their attention by the most pressing motives. The approach of the events that will precede the end of time. Whatever explanation be given of this book of the Apocalypse, it is equally true in all that the time is at hand. Listen to the words of the Revelation again in verse 3 of Revelation chapter 1. Blessed is he that readeth and heareth the words of this prophecy, and keepeth those things which are written in it, for the time is at hand. So whatever explanation be given of this book, it is equally true of all that the time is at hand when it will begin to be accomplished to find our consolation and happiness in this sacred book of Apocalypse. According to the promise of the Holy Ghost, we must pursue, my sons and daughters, it with faith. We must enter into this book of the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, with faith and humility. We must receive the interpretation of the church with submission and docility and practice the truths contained with fidelity and promptitude. What is the life of man since ages are but moments that escape us? Eternity is but a moment. Eternity is but a moment. But a moment that will never end. A moment that will never end. Look at the fourth verse of the book of Revelation, Apocalypse, chapter 1, verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him that is and that was and that is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne of God. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, who had loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The sixth verse, and had made us a kingdom and priest to God and his Father, to him be glory and empire forever and ever. Amen. John to the seven churches. Seven is the number. 
number of perfection, the number of completion. We are living in the church age. We are living in the dispensational period of grace. The Holy Ghost is upon the church. We are presently living in this dispensation of grace. Grace is still poured into the church. Even though the church is facing great crises at this time, God has not forsaken his church. He said in St. Matthew chapter 16 when he speaks to Simon, son of John, Simon, you are Peter, and upon this rock, you are the rock, and I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What you bind on earth is bound also in heaven. What you loose on earth is also loosed in heaven. And St. Paul says in uh, Second Ephesians, the second chapter, that the church is being built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. So we must understand in verses 4 through 6 of Revelation chapter 1, John to the seven churches, afterwards named. And they are named in the second and third chapter of Revelation. And by them to be understood of all churches, bishops, and people in the like dispositions. It says in the fourth verse, through the sixth verse of Revelation 1, from him who is, who was, and who is to come. As these words are only applied and are applicable to him who is truly God and eternal. It applies then to God the Father, because God is the great I am that I am. His name is Jehovah, Yahweh. Others think them to be spoken of God as the word God agrees to all the three divine persons who are one and the same God. Now, it says in Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, and from the seven spirits. Now, it is understood, it understands them of seven of God's attributes or perfections. But by the common exposition, are meant seven of the chief created spirits who in a special manner assist at God's throne. They are employed by sons and daughters, these seven spirits. They are employed, they are hired to execute God's commands. In uh, Tobias chapter 12 verse 15, it says, I am one of the seven who stand before God. So when we read the book of Tobias, chapter 12, verse 15, Tobias is one of the angelic spirits, and he says, I am one of the seven who stand before God. When we speak about and from the seven spirits, as found in Revelation, chapter 4 says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him that is and was that is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So Tobias is before the, the, the seven spirits when the angel Raphael is before God. Now it is understood them of seven of God's attributes of perfection so we see the spirits there before God. Some understand this of the Holy Ghost on account of his sevenfold gifts. But the most literal interpretation is of the principal angels who always surround the throne of God and are his ministering spirits. And then it says in the book of Revelation and from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made man incarnate in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is Son of Man and Son of God. Jesus has two natures. He's the Redeemer of mankind, who 
whom St. John here names, after the seven spirits, because he continues his discourse about Christ, the exalted one. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. It simply means exalted one, elevated one. Jesus was the son of God, son of man. He was the son of Joseph, not by uh, uh, the seed of Joseph, but by the command of God. Joseph was made the foster father of Jesus Christ. He is made man and the redeemer of mankind, who St. John names after the seven spirits, because he continues his discourse about Jesus Christ. It says, who is the faithful witness? This is what the text says. Who is the faithful witness in verse 5? And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness? It testifies and approved of God by so many miracles and prophecies of the Old Testament concerning Christ. He is the chief of the martyrs or the witness. Christ is the chief of the martyrs because he died on the cross, suffered, bled, and died for us. He is the witness. As the Greek word signifies, the first begotten of the dead. Both first in dignity and first that rose to an immortal life. And then the text says, the prince of the kings of the earth, whose power is infinitely greater than all of the princes and kings of the earth. And this to put the suffering Christians in mind, that they needed not to fear what was going to happen to them. They needed not to fear the persecuting emperors, the emperors such as Diocletian, who have no power after this life. These are earthly rulers who persecuted the church from the first through the third century. Of course, the Christian persecution ended in the third century under the emperor Constantine, who became a Christian, along with his mother Helena. And so, never mind these princes and kings of the earth. Their power is limited. And then the text says, And Christ has made us a kingdom. Basileia. Christ has made us a kingdom. That's why he said while he was on earth, the kingdom is within Inasmuch as by his grace he has made us members of his true church, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That's the first church. Now all of these other denominations protested from the 11th century, which is the Eastern Orthodox Church, which split from Rome, over the Filioque. The Eastern Church does not believe that the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son. They simply say that the Holy Ghost comes from the Father. They do not believe in the Filioque. They do not believe in the Assumption or in the uh, old doctrine of the Catholic faith. And so they are heretics. And then we have the Protestant Reformation, which we get in the 15th century all the way through. 16th century, and up to this present time, there are still splits within the church. These are not churches. They are communities that gather together who say they believe in Jesus Christ and in the Bible. But Christ did not establish those churches. Christ established one church upon St. Peter, the Catholic Church, the universal church. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so, the church is the kingdom, the Basileia. And so, inasmuch as by his grace he has made each and every one of us members of the mystical body of Christ through baptism, we are brought into the kingdom of God through the sacrament of baptism. We are made members of the church of Christ 
through baptism. We are born again through the sacrament of baptism. And then it says also in the text that he has made us priests to God and his Father. He has made us priests to God, his Father. In the sixth verse, it has made us a kingdom and priests to God, his Father. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. So if we are priests, then priests offer sacrifices. Christ gave us the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And that Mass was codified in the church by Pope St. Pius V, known as the Tridentine Mass. In our day, Pope Francis, who is presently the Pope in Rome, the heretic, who has said that there will be no more Tridentine Masses, that we will abolish the Tridentine Mass, that the Mass of the Old Rite cannot be said in the Church. Well, he has no power or authority to abrogate the Tridentine Mass. According to the bull, the, uh, the quote primum, of uh, Pope St. Pius V. And whoever dares to change or to take away this Mass they will incur unto them the wrath of God and of St. Peter and of Paul. Let us turn our Bibles to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, we find in these words of the first epistle of the head of the church. St. Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are a chosen generation, a kingly priesthood, a holy nation, a purchased people, that you may declare his virtues, who have called you out of darkness, out of sin, into his marvelous light. So as Christians, we are called the kingdom. To him be, it says in the book of Revelation, for is due glory and empire, ever and ever. Amen. That is Jesus Christ. In the book of wisdom, in the book of wisdom, uh, we have uh, in verse 7, Behold, he cometh, or is to come at the day of judgment. Let's go back to Revelation now, the book of Revelation, and let us look at what the Lord says here in verse Eight. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, said the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So we see the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. I am Alpha and I am Omega. Now these, the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet, signify the same as what follows beginning and the end, and the first cause and the last end of all intelligent beings, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now these words agree only to him who is the true God, Jehovah, and he are applied to our blessed Redeemer, the second person of the blessed Trinity, and who is to come and judge Let's look at verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. On the Lord's day. Let us deal with that phrase. Now, not on the Jewish Sabbath, which is our Saturday, but on the Christian Sabbath, our Sunday, which John called. And he called Sunday the Lord's Day because the church in the apostles' time, this is not some creative thing that we take away, the Sabbath, because the Sabbath was given to the Jews. When Christ came, suffered, bled, and died, was buried, and rose again, we receive the new day of the Lord, the day of his resurrection. 
And so in the apostles' time, they changed the day of rest on which the Jews were commanded to rest and sanctify that day from Saturday to Sunday, from the last day of the week to the first day. Now, they judge this only to be an indispensable precept, that some day or some time should be appointed in a special manner for God's service and worship, on which Christians should also abstain from work, servile work, that were not of necessity. As to the determination of such a day of the week, they judged that the church had power to change the day. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven, Peter. The late pretended reformers in the 15th century have all agreed with us in this change. So the reformers believe that Sunday was the Lord's day. The late pretended reformers, they all agreed to this. And if they would have all that is expressed in this commandment to be of indispensable, unchangeable obligation, according to the letter of the law, they ought certainly to observe, to sanctify, to abstain from all our work on the Saturdays or on the Jewish Sabbath. And then the verse says, And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet in the 10th verse of Revelation 1. A great voice of a trumpet to signify the importance of things to be revealed. A voice was heard. This was most likely St. John the Baptist who calls himself the voice of one crying in the desert. And who is in Malachi's uh, revelation is called the angel of the Lord, as he is also styled in the first verse of this chapter. Let us look at verse 12 of the book of Revelation. First of all, let us look at verse 11, saying, what you see right in this book, right this letter, and send to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These are the seven churches. Now, in the twelfth verse it says, And I turn, John says, I turn to see the voice that spoke with me. And in turn, I saw seven golden candlesticks. I saw seven perfections, seven golden candlesticks, which, by the last verse of this chapter, represented the seven churches of Asia Minor that existed in the days of St. John. We may suppose these candlesticks to have been showed to John like what is described in Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. And that's verse 31. And it reads, Thou shalt make also a candlestick of beaten work of the finest gold. The shaft thereof, and the branches, the cups, and the bowls, and the little goings forth from it. And so, it's described in Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. So, for in these visions of St. John on the island of Patmos are frequent allusions to the former tabernacle of the Old Testament. There are allusions to the former tabernacle and to things relating to the service and worship of God, which Moses was ordered to make, according to Exodus Leviticus. 
Let's turn to Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, if you please. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and gird about the paths with a girded, golden girdle. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So, for example, walking among the candlesticks, like unto Jesus Christ, as he many times called himself the Son of Man, and at other times told the Jews he was the Son, the only begotten Son of God. Christ is two natures, Son of Man, Son of God. By this walking among the candlesticks, it signified his providential care over all the particular churches which make up one holy Catholic and apostolic church. He walks among them with a long garment in, verse, in this verse of verse 13. And then also in verse 4, with a golden girdle with the resemblance of the habit of the priest, as found in the book of Exodus and Leviticus. Jesus Christ is in the midst of his church. That's the whole meaning of verse 13 of Revelation 1. He is in the midst of the church to enlighten it, to defend it, to sanctify it. The true model of pastors who should reside in the midst of their flock clothed with sanctity and justice and girt with the golden girdle with singular purity. That's why the priest wears the cincture. He girds himself with the cincture, asking God to deliver him from all concupiscence. Purity is necessary for the priesthood, always ready for combat and labor by their charity in verse 15, let's read verse 13 again. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white as wool and snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire. So in that 14 verse, it speaks about judgment. The ancient judges wore white woolen wigs, even to this day in some countries in Africa, in certain places, they still wear the woolen wig. It's a sign of judgment and power. The Lord is there, his head, his hair is as white as snow, his eyes a flame of fire, because judgment is about to come from him. So we see. Now in verse 15, and his feet like into fine grass as in a burning furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, Christ is walking in the midst of the candlesticks. His feet like into fine grass. It signifies purity. That's what the fine grass signifies. Purity and steadfastness of his steps and actions. His voice as the sound of many waters. The sound of his preaching by himself, by his apostles, has been heard throughout all the nations of the world. Let's look at verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. In his right hand seven stars. He held them in his hands. They are the pastors of the church bishops of the church. And from his mouth came out a sharp two-edged sword. The word of God is like a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was as the sun shining in his power. His feet like unto fine grass, signifying purity. In his right hand the seven stars, which is as it said in verse 20, mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. 
So in his right hand, seven stars, which as it is said in verse 20, which I just read on Revelation chapter 1, were the angels. The angels here are the bishops, the pastors of the seven churches. By this comparison is expressed their dignity. And from his mouth came out a sharp two-edged sword. The word of God preached is compared to a two-edged sword. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Let's turn to that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And it reads these words. Ephesians 6 and 17. And take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let's turn to Hebrews. Hebrews, St. Paul writes his letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and it reads, For the word of God is living and effectual and more piercing than any two-edged sword and reaching unto the division of the soul and the spirit of the joints also and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We need to read that again. What is the word of God when it's preached? The word of God is living and effectual. It's living and it does things. And more piercing than any two-edged sword. It's, it will cut you up. The word of God will cut you up. That's why every priest or bishop who preaches must preach in power. And in demonstration, signs following. That is why Jesus Christ sent the Holy Ghost upon the church. He said in Acts 1 and 8, And when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. Our Lord said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore into all the world, preach my gospel. Baptize in every creature in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. He gave us pastors and teachers, evangelists, perfecting the saints, that we all might come into the unity of the faith. It is important that we understand the role of the bishop. First Timothy chapter 3, it says these words, if we read First Timothy, Chapter 3, these words about the bishops of the church. Christ gave us the bishops of the church for these reasons. This is what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3. A faithful saying, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. The second verse of the third chapter of 1 Timothy. It behooveth therefore a bishop to be blameless, the husband of one wife, in those days, the bishops married. In the early days of the Catholic Church, bishops married. It is still so in many of the Catholic churches outside of Rome. Many priests are married. There are married priests. However, the discipline of the Roman Church is celibacy. It behooves therefore a bishop to be blamed as the husband of one wife. In this case, the church is the wife of the bishop. Sober, prudent, of good behavior, chaste, given to hospitality, a teacher. Not given to wine, no striker, but modest, not quarrelsome, not covetous, but one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all charity. But if a man knew not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a neophyte, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the judgment of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony of them who are without, lest he fall into reproach with the snare of the devil. So we see here in St. Paul's letter, he gives us what a bishop is. Now we look at Titus. St. Paul writes to Titus in Titus chapter 1. Paul, the servant of God and the apostle Jesus Christ, according to the faith, of the elect of God and the acknowledging of the truth which is according to godliness, unto the hope of life everlasting which God, who lieth not, 
had promised before the time of the world, but had the new time manifested his word in preaching, so we must preach, God has manifested himself through preaching, which is committed to me, according to Paul, and according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, who was sent to Crete, my beloved son, according to the common faith. The bishops call his priests his sons. Grace and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Savior. For this cause I left thee in Crete. So every bishop gives appointments, and no priest and no bishop has a right to tell the chief bishop what to do. The bishop has the right to move his priest wherever the need is. Now, for those of you that are part of the society of St. Alphonsus Marie de LaGuardia, you should not become so comfortable where you are because we have the right to move you for a greater good. Many of you have become self-sufficient and you feel as though that you don't need the aid of the Mother Church. But you need the aid of the Mother Church because you cannot exist without a chief bishop over your churches. It is the duty of the superior general of the society, who is the prime bishop, to have the right to move his bishops and priests wherever the need arise. And our lay people ought to understand that, that this is the way of Catholicism. St. Paul writes to his beloved son Titus, he says, I left you in Crete, in the fifth verse of the first chapter of Titus, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and shouldest ordain priests in every city, as I also appointed thee. If any be without crime and husband of one wife, having faithful children, not of cures of bride and glory. So in those days, the bishops had to have a good home. They had to have a good wife. They had to have their home right. And then it says, for a bishop must be without crime as the steward of God. He must not have these defects. Not proud, not subject to anger, not given to wine, no striker, no greedy of filthy lucre, but given to hospitality, gentle, sober, just, holy, continent, embracing that faithful word which is according to doctrine, that he may be able to exhort in sound doctrine and to convince the gainsayers. For there are also many disobedient vain talkers and seducers, and especially they who are of the circumcision. Because there were Jewish people among the church during this time. When St. Paul is writing to Titus, they were troublemakers. We must be reproved who subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of them, a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars and beasts slothful in their appetites. So St. Paul speaks about the work of the bishops, the pastors of the church, to the seven angels. They are the bishops of the seven churches in Asia Minor. By this comparison, expressed their dignity. And from the mouth of came out a sharp two-edged sword. The word of God is preached and is compared to a two-edged sword, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, and Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It also signifies God's severity in punishing sinners. God will punish sinners. I mentioned this in my homily today. You know, I know many of you will be tired of hearing about sinners. But many of you have not truly turned your life over to Christ. And you know that. In verse 17, if we go back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, and when I had seen him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first I am the first and the last, according to verse 17. These are the words of the Son of Man, or of him that represented our Savior Jesus Christ, who represented himself to St. John of the Isle of Patmos, to be the first and the last. It's another expression of agreeing only to him who is the true God. And it is diverse times applied by the prophet Isaiah. From the 12th verse to this place, we have a description of the Son of Man. Christ, the different in 
emblematical description of his countenance, his dress are similar to what are used by other prophets and easily explained of his attributes, his eternity, and his vengeance from his eyes like fire. In verse 18 it says, And a lie that was dead, and behold, I am living forever and ever, and have the keys of death and of hell. I was alive, I died, and now I am alive again. And alive and was dead, always living as God, the second person of the blessed Trinity. And as man was dead, I died as a man, died on the cross for the salvation of all men. I rose again on the third day and triumphed over hell, death, and sin, and am living forever and ever. And now you have the keys of death and of hell, power over all things, being made subject to me, even as man or as God and man. Verse 20, which I will end this session. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, are the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, are the seven angels, are the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks are the seven churches. So we see here that these are the seven bishops of the churches. Christ is seven and seven here, and seven churches, seven angels. Christ having them in his right hand shows the care he takes of his church. Christ cares for his church. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the ages. Christ is with us to the end of time. We must understand that. Christ is with us. My sons and daughters, as we end this session today, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us in the study of the last book of the Bible known as the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. I want you to read for next week verse uh, this 1 through 20 of uh, chapter 1 of Revelation. Meditate on what I've given you. Christ is in the midst of his church. Christ will never leave his church. Even in these crises, God is doing what he needs to do in order to empty out his church of all vice and evil and wickedness. And we should rejoice today that Christ is sweeping his church. He is cleaning up his church. And sometimes these measures must be taken. We must pray that the church will remain ever faithful to Christ, the gospel, the sacred traditions, the sacred scriptures, and the timeless magisterium of the church. Please join us tomorrow morning in our morning mass at 8 a.m. God bless each and every one of you. In nobody God, Jesus, and purity, the spirit of sanity, amen. Let me not, O oh Lord, be puffed up with worldly wisdom which passes away. But grant me that love which never abates that I may not choose to know anything among men but Jesus Christ and the crucified. I beg thee, dear Jesus, that he upon whom thou hast graciously bestowed the sweet savor of the words of thy knowledge may also possess the fount of all wisdom and shine forever before thy countenance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now the blessings of Almighty God. Amen.